G'day guys and gal. Originally, I was gonna title this video, Why the Line is My Favorite Primark. But then I realized that my opinion is more valid than yours, so I've changed it accordingly. You might be sitting there being like, huh, no one is better than the glorious Hawk Boy. Or, nah, Angeron's the best. Also, I'm suicidal. But the reality is that they just don't match up to the lion. Now, I'm not saying that the Primark is the best for fighting or commanding or has won the most amount of Primark bingo games. No, I'm saying that he as a character is the most interesting and engaging, even if he seems like he's a bit of a spurg sometimes. Maybe it's the fact that he's a space knight. Maybe it's the fact that he was able to become an extremely well-adjusted member of society despite growing up alone and surrounded by demonic monsters. Or maybe it's Maybelline. Regardless, by the end of this video, the lion will be your favorite Primark as well, or your money back. Before we get started, we all know Manscaped. Thanks to the Lawnmower 3.0, my cock and balls have never been smoother. And I've been told that the ball deodorant and ball toner has made the experience of sucking Major Kill Jr. that much more enjoyable. Or maybe that's just all the pineapple juice I've been drinking. Regardless, life is good, but it can be better. See, Manscaped have brought out the Lawnmower 4.0, and holy shit, you could polish diamonds with my balls now. The 4.0 allows for a closer cut and versatility, whilst even further reducing irritation. It also looks slick as hell and can be charged wirelessly. The 4.0 is available in the Perfect Package 4.0 that comes with the Ball Preserver, Ball Reviver, and a complimentary toiletries bag and undies. I must admit, I was a bit skeptical of the effectiveness of something like Ball Deodorant, but it genuinely stops stanky dick in its tracks and gives you a fresh finish. Use my link and code below MAJORKILL for 20% off and free shipping worldwide. Thank you to Manscaped for sponsoring this video. Today we're going to be gargling down that lion cock, talking about who the lion is and why he's fucking awesome. We'll do this by deep diving into some of his highlights. This video will kind of be like that Gilliman one, except the lion's better. Let's get into it. Straight up, the lion had the toughest upbringing. Sure, Conrad landed into his planet's crust, had to crawl through magma, and then had to hide from rapists on a dark, crime-infested world. And sure, Lorga had to endure Corferion's figure in his butthole for a couple years. But the lion landed on Caliban, a techno-feudal death world that had been racked with warp jizz in the past. As such, a lot of the animals on Caliban had been mutated by chaos and now made the monsters from Greek mythology look like a bunch of poodles. The lion grew up in these forests, hiding from these creatures for a time before he grew enough to become the apex predator. The hunted had become the hunter. Killing chaotic beasts during your toddler years is not considered a particularly healthy environment to grow up in, but when the lion was discovered by some sweet ass cyberpunk knights led by a man named Luther, he adjusted very quickly. Despite his horrendous first few years, the lion quickly matured into a focus, disciplined and honorable man, mostly free from the savagery you would expect there to be in him. Once the lion had grown up, the man lad declared a jihad on all chaos beasts in the forest, and he led his army of hectic knights to battle. Out of all the Primarch origins, this is by far the one I want to see an animation or a video of. The lion and his knights were victorious, and the emperor arrived soon after. Now I know that some people think that the best Primarchs are the ones that offer the Emperor a unique challenge when he presented himself before them. I will admit that Russ beating his dad in a drinking contest is a fun moment in the lore. But any Primarch who kicked up a big fuss about joining the Imperium, hence required the Emperor to complete some kind of challenge to get their loyalty, were a bit of a spastic. The Primarchs, like Fulgrim and Perturabo, who immediately fell to their knees and tried to suck their dad's cock, were also a bit spastic, and it shows they ended up as traitors. The best Primarchs were the ones who greeted the Emperor warmly and respectfully. The Lion knew instantly what the Emperor was to him and what his purpose was as soon as they were reunited. He was also given immediate command over his legion, which numerous other Primarchs had to work hard for for months or even years to achieve. It was clear that the Lion had a special gift, the gift of having basic common fucking sense. Using his level-headed mind, brilliant military tactics, and badass space knights, the Lion's record of victories and planetary compliances were matched only by Horus and Gilliman. I believe for a time, the Lion was actually ahead of them, but fell down in the ranking when they had to deal with the Rangdang Xeno side. The Emperor even trusted the Lion with forbidden weapons from the Dark Age of Technology, as he knew that the only Primarch who had the restraint and wisdom to use them would be Mr. Johnson. Now the Lion does come across as cold and ruthless at times, but he is a very reasonable man. For example, during what looked like it was going to be a standard peaceful takeover of the planet Sarosh, shit nearly went very sideways. 
When the delegate from the planet arrived on the lion's ship, he began to call the lion a cocksucker, and then his dad was a deadbeat piece of shit. The lion responded by doing what any reasonable person would do. He impaled the asshole delegate with his gigantic two-handed Primarch sword. That wasn't the bad part though. The delegate had snuck a nuclear bomb onto his shuttle and intended to blow up the lion and his commanders. Luther, the lion's adoptive dad and second command that we mentioned earlier, discovered the nuke and nearly allowed it to detonate. You might be like, wow, that's a shit thing for a dad to do, and you'd be right. See, Luther was a legend. The greatest man Caliban had ever seen, and destined to unite the planet and send it into the future. Until the lion arrived and did all of that anyway. If Luther had been born in any other previous era or generation, he would have been top dog for sure. As such, he'd grown really jealous of the lion, and in that moment of jealousy, almost allowed his adoptive son to die so that he could take command of the Dark Angels. He snapped out of it and he ejected the nuke, but the hesitation was still there. The lion was obviously not stoked about nearly getting nuked, especially since the nuke wasn't that well hidden if Luther was able to find it after a quick look about. It seemed as if he suspected Luther's treachery, but his people skills weren't very good. Like the lion could be a bit of a brick wall sometimes, and he had a hard time trusting people and showing people how he felt. This is a big reason why people were unsure if the lion was a loyalist or traitor for a bit, cause you know, he had a hectic poker face. Regardless, the Lion sent Luthor and a bunch of other marines back to Caliban to oversee the recruitment of more Dark Angels. This turned out to be a big mistake, and it cost the Lion and the Dark Angels dearly, which adds more value to the fact that the Lion is the best Primarch. He is flawed, and he's made some mistakes. Someone like Sanguinius, who is pure and perfect, isn't the best Primarch for that reason. Sanguinius seems like he's a genuine alien because he's just so hard to relate to on that regard. This brings me to my biggest point of all. The Lion is the best Primarch because he is the most relatable to us. Whoa, 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 Major Kill, hold the phone! You saying this guy is the most relatable to this guy? Yes, here's why. Imagine for a second, you grew up on a hectic planet full of monsters and knights, and you had Primarch superpowers. Is there anything you would do differently to the Lion? You'd unite the knights, have hectic night wars against monsters, you'd join up with the Emperor, and you would conquer as many worlds in his name as you could. When shit happens, like you know, almost getting blown up by a rogue nuke, you'd have a bit of an oh fuck that was close moment and your judgement might be a bit impaired. Maybe you would have a knee jerk reaction and banish your second in command you suspect might have questionable loyalty. After all, you have a galaxy to conquer, you shouldn't have to spend time explaining your entire plan and logic to one single man. The Lion believed he should be War Master instead of Horus, not because he was power hungry, but because he genuinely thought he was the best person for the job. He may have genuinely been the best pick for War Master, however the Emperor knew, through wacky 4D chess that he played with Malkador, that whoever was chosen to be War Master would fall to chaos, hence the Emperor could have even deliberately not chosen the Lion because of how much he valued him. Back onto the relatable side of things, there is a scene during the Horus Heresy where the Lion and his crew are stuck in the warp with failing Gellerfields. As such, the ship is attacked by demons. Not ideal. The demons, however, are repelled by some Dark Angel librarians. But, this was when the Council of Nikia was in effect, so technically, the librarians using their mind lasers to scorch demonic balls was a no-no. The Lion was cool with this. If the only options are to die to demons or let librarians save you, he chose the latter, cause you know, anyone would do that. Anyone except for the Dark Angel's chaplain, who refused the lion's order to go find the other librarians on the ship. The lion gave the chaplain multiple warnings to obey the order, and the chaplain kept being like, but dad, the law says no. So eventually, the lion cracked the shits and he punched his son so hard in the face that his son's head exploded and he died instantly. Now that might sound a bit excessive, but it's actually very relatable. If I had just discovered the only way to save mine and my warriors lives, and then some uppity dickhead who was supposed to be my bitch was telling me no, I'd probably smash their brains in as well. It also feeds into the notion that the lion is a beast masquerading as a man, whilst Russ, who is the lion's counterpart, is a man masquerading as a beast. That's some multi-layered shit going on there. The Emperor himself had a special place for the Lion, and he talked to him quite bluntly and honestly, as if the Lion was a Custodes and not a Primarch. For example, the Emperor admitted to the Lion that the triumph of Ulanor was a farce, designed to sate Horus and the other Primarch's egos. We also have to remember that the Dark Angels are the first Legion. The Lion was the first Primarch to be created. It's heavily implied that the Dark Angels were almost like the Emperor's own Legion. 
the Legion he could turn to and wield whenever shit needed to get sorted. As I mentioned earlier, it was the Dark Angels who were deployed against the Rangdun, as the Rangdun were by far the greatest threat to the Imperium at the time. Whilst Jagadai by far has the best attitude towards the Horus Heresy, that being, yes, I know the Emperor's a bit of a tyrant and a bit of a hypocritical dick, but the alternative is a bunch of demons, so yeah, I'm gonna stick with the Emperor on that one, buddy. The Lion also had a great one as well. He was hyper loyal without the dick sucking, because loyalty was the common sense thing to do. When Kairos Fateweaver came to the Lion to try turn up to Chaos, he realized that there was absolutely nothing he could say that would even give the Lion a moment of pause and consideration. For those that don't know, Kairos can see the near future very accurately, which made it even more epic when the Lion impaled him with his sword and said, Did you see this coming? Same energy as... Dodge this. The Lion seems to be able to fuck with Chaos. He seems to fall outside of Chaos's foresight and planning, his very existence a spanner in their works. Other Lion highlights I enjoy is him being able to win a fatal contest of wills against a million year old godlike Xeno, him being able to win a duel against Conrad Curse despite Curse being able to see the future, and him having a multi-day hectic brawl with Lehman because of a misunderstanding. There is a reason why GW is gearing up for the Lion to be the next Primarch to return, and it's because he's fucking awesome and it would be the best thing for the setting. The Lion is loyal, but his interpretation of loyal can rub people the wrong way, which we love. I will admit, the line has been poorly written at times, which I think contributes to a lot of people not understanding how fucking badass he is. But if you delve deep enough, you can see the absolute gem of a man he is. GW writing, especially for Primarchs, has improved a lot recently. Gilliman being a great example of this, so I'm very excited to see what they do with Mr. Johnson when he wakes up from his big ass nap. If you enjoyed the video and you want to support the channel, then Patreon is the place to be. Where only $1 per month give you access to a boatload of hentai, including this um, Mrs. Johnson piece. Hit the subscribe button, then hit the real subscribe button for more unbiased Dark Angel loving content. Join the Discord for more memes, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.